Jock or, or, or Wikipedia, it says that you know you you were one of the the, the producers on, on the track. So how did the song come about itself? The song was already an idea that they had. It was a demo. Okay. And it just wasn't it wasn't good. It wasn't produced. So I produced the track out into a record. Okay. And I put it on my label, J Records. Now, just before you, we, we talk about the label, the production side, did you, was it just the time that you, in, in the studio with, with Microphone Confunction, that you learned the art of production? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, I'm just from writing, being a songwriter, because now, before I do that, I'm songwriting, I'm writing my own songs. So while you're in the studio, you're learning. But even when I produced Rumors, I wasn't a real producer. I was a guy <laughs> who produced a record that was a hit. But I didn't learn production really and really understand what production was for another 10 years. Okay. Were you really, like now I, now I understand production suit the nuts and how to make a record and how to find the right musicians to play and, you know, and I mean, you know the um, arrangements and, uh, you know, and all the things that, that it takes to be a great producer. Yeah. But back then, how did you, they came to you with this idea and then they trusted you? No, somebody brought them to me. They didn't have the money. They trusted me. I took the record and they hated it when I was done. They said I messed their record up. <laughs> wow. Because they were used to listening to this raggedy demo and they wanted the record to sound like that, but that was a demo. It wasn't going to sound like that. I made the record sound like a real record. I made it bigger. I gave it more definition. I, I you know, um, I added, you know, different parts that 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 wasn't that didn't exist that really turned it into a, a production in a record. Mm. And um, and so when you'd finished with it, did you think it was going to be a hit, or what were your thoughts after you'd finished? even though they didn't like it? Um, I just knew I just knew it was going to be a hit. I just thought, um, I just thought it was going to be a hit. I, I, I just, in my gut. And one day I prayed to God because I was so in love with the music business. And I just said, God, if this is, if this is not what I'm supposed to do, please take this desire out of me. But if this is what I'm supposed to do, please make this song a hit. And he made it a hit. Wow. Did you form J Records because no one else wanted to um, distribute it? Or it was more so you found it, it? What was the sort of real thinking behind it? Because if... if um... Nobody liked the record. Nobody liked the record. Everybody said that the record sounded like it was made in my garage. And they... And they laughed at the record. And they made fun of the record. And they said the drums were too loud. All the things that they said were the reason why the people loved the record. Yeah. And really, we really changed the course of the music business at that time because music was kind of flailing a little. And when we did Rumors, we married the old school and the new school together. We were the last of the old school and the first of the new school when it came to production because we married technology with the drum machines and the synthesizers, still using some live instruments with guitar and such and, and stuff like that. And so we really changed the scope of how people saw production, her productions, and we really scaled down um, what a production could sound like without having to be this big orchestra thing mm. where it could just be drums and bass and keys. Yeah. And of course, vocals. Yeah. And so as, as, cause you've invested everything by selling, you know, to, to get the late label going and you, 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 it was pushing how, uh, what were, you, were you going to stations and how would, you know, how would get, how do people, how were the, the, <laughs> the audience hearing the songs to call in to the record local stations to uh, to get well, it. That's, now that's funny because you know the united states is huge yeah the united states is like a lot of little countries together yeah. you know, like california has 40 million people right 
Yeah. And then in California, you have Southern California and Northern California. Yeah. So they're they're even so so if I go from one side of California to the other, it could take me 12 hours to drive from one side of California to the other side, right? Mm. That's how big it is. So and and so you got radio stations in all these cities. Yeah. And um not not every city got a black radio station. So, so, so only where you can, where you have black radio, can you even do you even have a chance of being played? Mm. And then you got to have somebody to walk into that station. That's a promoter. That's a record promoter. So I didn't know those guys. So when I first did rumors, I went to the radio station in Sacramento and said, "Hey, I got a record. I'm from Sacramento. I'd like you guys to play it." And they laughed at me. <laughs> so that's how I learned about independent promotion guys. You know, the way I learned about distribution was I went to Tower Records and said, my name is Jay King. I live here in Sacramento. This is my 12 inch. I like to put it in the stores. And they said, well, who's your distributor? And then I said, I am. And they said, no, you got to have a company that distributes and then they'll distribute to the one stop and the one stop will sell to us. And that's how I learned what one stops were and how that worked. So I really learned it all by trial and error. Yeah. But I was a great student. And so that's how I learned the music business. And that's how I became strong enough to do it again and again. It's, you know, Tootsie Roll with the 69 boys, yeah. Dominoes, Ghetto Jam, Rodney and Joe Cooley, you don't hear me though. Gary Taylor, you know, blind to it all. You know, I, I did a lot of records independently after that. Yeah, okay. Mac, yeah. Mac Mall, Mac Dre, Ray Love, all those things I did independently because once I learned it, I learned it. Yeah, no, but you, you, and I think you have to, you have to. Our uh, audience appreciates the um, the stories that you, that you're sharing, and the 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 with with the rumors track going back to that. So you got a pro independent promoter to help go to the stations, or did you f work alongside the independent promoter to go to the stations? Well, initially, I found the smaller stations in small cities like Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, uh, um, Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, Mobile, Alabama, places that that you could go into the radio station and meet the program director because okay. he's probably a, a, a DJ on a station, and you give him a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, and boom, now he's you know you got a friend, you know you, you bought him some dinner, you bought him some drinks, you gave him some gas for his car, he liked you, you like him, now he listens to your record. And said, man, this, you might have something here. And that's uh, how you started. Yeah, so you don't go to the big New York and L.A. No, and, no, you and try. No, you, you go, guys. The small guys dictate, react, or act. Mm. So, so before Sacramento started to, and California started playing it, it was bubbling in these sort of smaller states and cities. Right. California the, was the last state that I went to because California would not play. You know, California is a big, you know, if you're getting stationed in California, you're big time. Mm. So you got to you gotta get the smaller states, for the smaller cities, mm. you know, in the southern states where there's more concentration of black folk. Yeah. How long before, from the time you had rumors ready, did it start to really hit the airwaves and really make a noise? How long did it take? Six months. Wow. Six months. And, and, and it went on Billboard chart and, died, and lost its bullets three times, which is unheard of. Once you make it onto the Billboard chart and then you lose your bullet, your you record process, this, it doesn't get it back. I, I lost mine and got it three times. On the way to going number one, and it went to number one on the R&B charts for four weeks, I believe. Wow! And all the major, with, with all the major labels shooting at me, trying to kill me, the major labels couldn't kill it. That's how strong the record was. Yeah, as I said, it's a global hit. Um, but then, yeah. so this is the thing that a lot of us, you know, when artists talk about being blacklisted by the labels and stuff, the labels. What are they doing? Are they trying to push their own records? Are they trying to get the stations to block playing it on the playlist? Or, well, 
what they're doing is this. They're, they're pricing you out the market. So let's say that a record, let's say for one station it costs, costs you about $800 to, to get that record on that radio station. The record companies will run the price so high, maybe three times that. So instead of $800, it costs $2,400 for that station. So you can't compete because you're just a small guy, right? Mm. So what they do is they price you out the game. You know, and so when people say that they've been blacklisted, those are people that are going back to labels, begging them to let them, you know, let them record for them. Yeah. I never got blacklisted because I never went back to labels begging them to let me record for them. Yeah. You know, once I was done with you, I was done. The reason why I ended up at Warner Brothers because they came to me. Yeah. And they gave me a lot of money. But but I think that the, the story is more so the power of the labels, that if they decide, as you said, to price you out, to stop you from releasing your music, you know, that's that's the, they have that sort of a monopoly. But because the record of the the audience are requesting it, the station have to play it. Was, was that the case with rumors? Absolutely, because the people are going to keep calling and you got to play that record. So here's the story. Terry Avery at KKDA in Dallas, Texas, calls me one day and says, can I speak to Jay King? Because my... My number was on the back of the 12 inch, right? <laughs> so she calls me and says, can I speak to Jay King? I said, this is Jay King. She said, Mr. King, my name is Terry Avery. I'm the program director at KKDA 104 in Dallas. Um, we're playing your song, Rumors. And um, I just wanted you to know that we are going to be playing a record. I said, thank you so much. And she said, but sir, I would like to ask you to tell your friends to stop calling the radio station." I said, I don't understand what you mean. She said, your friends are calling the radio station and it's knocking our phone lines down. We're going to play the record, but they can't call when we play it. And I said, ma'am, I don't have any friends in Dallas. I'm in California. And she said, do you have a service working for you? I said, no, ma'am. <laughs> she said, you mean to tell me you don't have a service or anybody calling and bugging this radio and telling us to play this radio? I said, no, ma'am. This, this song, she said, if you're telling me the truth, you need to get ready because you have a smash record. Every time we play your song, our phones ring so much that it'll knock our phone lines down. Wow. And that's when I knew that rumor was with a big record. Wow. Because KKDA is a big station. Yeah, yeah. You know, Ellis is a big, you know, yeah, big in, city. In, you know, in a big city. Yeah. So while you were doing all this, what would... The guys with Timex, what were they doing while you were running around trying to get this stuff? What, 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 were they performing or what were they doing? Complaining. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get it. You know, they, didn't, they didn't believe in it because you got to remember we're in California. There's diddly happening in California. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm on other states saying, man, I'm in, I'm in. I'm in Dallas, this is what's happening. I'm in and Louisiana, this is what's happening. I'm in Alabama, this is what's happening. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why, why isn't it happening in California? We live in California. We can't see what's happening there. We don't believe you, you know, with that thing. Wow. How long before but, they realized what was happening? Well, about nine, nine months. And then they felt it. And then they went and signed a deal with somebody else behind my back because we didn't have contracts. Wow. And that's why I wrote Jealousy. But then who owned my club? Who owned the the rumor? Yes. I did. I'm J Records. Okay. So they recut rumors. They had to recut it with the new company. And so you got the original version, then you had this corny version of Rumors, which they made a video to the corny version. Okay. So and my, my, my version is the popular version. Okay. So, okay. So the, um, oh my goodness. So, cause I, I, I think most of us didn't understand where, 
where the rivalry came from. So they just thought, oh, okay, this is a good chance for us to find make our make our stuff. So the the ones. So if we were to, were they legally allowed to re-record the track? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With their song. Okay. There was no contract. So if I, you know, we, we're doing this on a handshake and friends. Okay, so this is where you said that's that. Ah, uh, that's how I learned. How, that's how I learned the music business. <laughs> okay, it, it, was there, What was the, their reasoning for doing this and and cutting you off? They felt like that. Like I wasn't. I wasn't versed enough in the music business and they went to a company and it was a small company. And I think because the guy gave him some money, I think he gave him $6,000 a piece. Oh, goodness. Even peanuts taste good sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but they hadn't seen the work you were doing and the fact that the record had made it no, because of the independent, it, the money don't just start coming. You have to, you know, there's cost, there's all this, you know, it costs money. Yeah, so I all mean, the you're money traveling. I mean, is going right back into the record because I got to make it a hit. Yeah. Artists don't necessarily understand the music business. They understand the art business. They know how to make art. Mm. They don't know how to make business. Yeah. And so... That's why most artists end up broke. It ain't because they're not generating enough money. It's because if you make money and you spend it, guess how much money you have? You have however much money you have minus what you spent, right? Mm -hmm. But if you don't make money and you don't make your money grow, if you don't invest in different things or speculate, you know, if you don't um, make good bit sound business decisions, you're going to end up broke because all the money you make, you spend and you got to pay taxes and you got, you know, and, you know, you got a lifestyle you got to live up to. You know, people buy a $10 million house and they think, you know, that that's it. Well, you buy a $10 million house, that means you probably have somewhere around 300 to a half million dollars in upkeep in that house year in and year out mm -hmm. between the, between the ground, the, the pool, the, the wait staff, people, you know, you know, it, it comes with a price tag. Mm -hmm. Choices have invoices. Yeah, because I think when I heard you say that you had to, you're traveling around the country, in my head, I'm thinking, well, that must have cost money. I mean, you're, you're, either you're flying, staying in a motel, you know, having to pay people to, to get things. So that seems like there's a lot of cost involved in that. Absolutely. So you, so all the money you're making, you're just putting it right back out. And eventually, at first, it's like, you know, you're spending this much money, you're making this much money. And the idea is for that money to grow to where even if you're spending, you do, you know, you're making more. Yeah. So you can do it. Yeah. And um, so wh when, when they did that, um, wh wh uh -huh. where was this, where, when they, dis when they signed with this independent, where was the song, where was Rumors at that point in time on the charts? Top, top 20. Top twenty. So this was your your version um, that was being sold. My version. My version went to number one. My version is the international hit. Rumors. Yeah. They made a second version that you never that you might may or may not have heard. Yeah, but then when they released that, what did they benefit from? Well, because what they, well, because now they have a version of the record themselves, so they can start licensing it later. Okay. They get the, they get to marry that record to them. They control it. I control this one. They control that one. They have an album that they can put that one on, and that's what they do. They, um, um, the the vicious rumors album. They released that song on there, and they released a song called Thinking About You. Yeah. And I released Jealousy. Is, is that then when you just, to form Club Nouveau, you went to you form Club Nouveau and, and say, let's, let's put, put that out there? 
And because jealousy sounds a lot like rumors on purpose. So I can't tell you why these things continue to happen to me. You know, I don't need uh, 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 jealousy. I don't want the bad talk around me. You know, I'm talking about them. You came sure. off spreading rumors because you were so jealous. You didn't understand that we were on your side. Tell me why not, fellas. You let some people guide you in the wrong direction. From the truth, you cannot hide, so don't go look for no protection. I didn't understand you then, and you know I just can't now. You know, I tried to help you not out, and now it's me you're trying to clown. But let me tell you, partner, you won't come out ahead. All this jealousy will do is make you lose it all instead. I don't need jealousy. I don't want the bad talk around. What about those guys? Wow. I remember being in high school and hearing the jealousy as well and thinking, wow, there's a war going on. And it was so intriguing for us. I mean, because we, you know, as I said, we didn't, we got the black beats and right tones, but when you're so far removed, we only get the records without yes. knowing the real story and things. The, um, how hard was it for you? Because I, I, you know, you, I'm hearing all the work you did behind the scenes and then to have it happen personally, how did that affect you? Well, I mean, you know, it made you work harder, you know, it made you matter, made you want to succeed. You know, you make you want to prove yourself over and over again. So, yeah. But you, like I said, you know, I, I was always focused. I'm 59 years old. You know, I've never had a drink in my life. I've never smoked a joint a day in my life. I've never been high a day in my life. I knew exactly where to focus my energy. Yeah. And I focus my energy to being successful. Yeah. The, um, the, the one thing about rumors, when they said, heard that one about Michael, was it, who were they referring to? Which Michael? Because we all thought it was. Jackson. Are you kidding? We all thought it was. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear that one about Michael? Some say he must be gay. I tried to argue, but they said if he was straight, he wouldn't move that way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We all thought it, but we didn't. We just thought, no, maybe not. Okay. What about the one about Tina then? Is that Tina Turner or is that just... Yes. Yes, Tina Turner. Oh, so these were actually, these were, they were naming celebrities. Because of rumors, you, you know, Susan Anton. And a camel saw she's six feet tall. So that could be Susan Anton or Susan from Vanity Six. <laughs> these are just rumors. That's how okay. the rumors get started. Started by people that are jealous about people that are famous. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview. Loads to come, but thanks a lot for watching.